everybody, Texas Stroke here, Lance, the performer shop, LoneStarMopars.com. It's Friday night, so I just got done cranking out a random tool haul for you. I figured we'd throw together another quick video. It's, uh, this is uh, some of the stuff we bring in kind of behind the scenes. Every once in a while I decide we'll make a video on it and, uh, you know, just showcase some stuff. No clue on if how we're going to like this at all, but I figured we'd uh, try it out. So what you have here is just a smorgasbord of random stuff from Chemical Guys. And uh, I guess we'll start here, which we've got uh, one of their brushes. It's ACC204 would be the part number. And I'm hoping what I can do with this is clean the wheels and tires easier. <laughs> I happen to use uh, what I'm currently using. So uh, excited about that one. This is just simply a wash mint. The brush itself was uh, pretty reasonable, $6.99. Should get like a season at least out of that. Uh, the Mitt 749, again with multiple colors, of course, I would go with blue. Uh, my current one, I've, I've been using it quite a while, it's held up pretty good, so figured I'd try the Chemical Guys one. Uh, this right here I was pretty excited about because my glass gets like absolutely trash. Not being able to drive the truck, you know, with everything going on. Uh, the Challenger sits out there and it's just, there's grain elevators nearby and a landfill and whichever way the wind blows, I've got crud attacking me. Uh, so this is a waffle weave towel and I'm hoping that I can kind of get like a good streak free finish uh, where there's less surface contaminants for the dirt to stick to and then I can't see when I drive into the sun type of a thing. Uh, price on these would be, let's find their part number actually. I'm not sure because they're calling them both towels. I would say... $7.99 or $6.99, again, I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> and this one, uh, which would be the microfiber towels, which they conveniently called two items. Uh, 16 by 16, I thought it was a decent size. Uh, it would come in at either $7.99 or $6.49. So I've had pretty good luck with chemical guy stuff, uh, what I've used. So I figured we'd just bring this uh, menagerie in and see what we think of it. Uh, something else, where do we want to go from here? Let's go right here. This is a deal I have shown you in the past. I've made a video on it. I absolutely love it. I think it's one of the best um, products you can get. And uh, it is from Joe's Racing. Uh, the part number is going to be 32307. It sent me back $23.95. It is right there. I'm not even going to open that because I've got this one here on the bench because I leave it out because I use it all the time couple of uh, key features on this sucker okay number one it does glow in the dark that's why it kind of looks funky like something that would glow in the dark it does glow in the dark they come in various different readouts right uh, this one goes from 5 to 60 psi I pick this one up because it's what I use for my cars like if we were at the track and we aired down it covers that and also on my truck you know depending on the psi I'm running uh, we can go up and cover all spectrums there. Uh, if you're just going to get one specifically for like when you're at the track, get a smaller gauge, uh, pressure range 0 to 15, you know, 5 to 20, whatever you're doing. And obviously you can take this same surface area and just have it be more precise. But essentially you get a knockout every 5 PSI. And then as we come in past that, it's easy to read, which is something I like about it. If I zoom in for you, and if it seemed busy on the screen, that's because they actually individually number those for you as well. Uh, so the case itself is awesome. The readout is great. Right here, uh, I'm able to adjust on the fly, which is amazing. And then right here, one of the unsung features, this swivels 360 with zero issues. Wherever your valve stems are, if you've got deep offsets, if they're shallow, if they're skinnies, you can make this thing work. Uh, it is a fantastic product. I brought in the Capri one recently because it was on sale for 19. Uh, it's been okay, but this one I've used for years now, and I absolutely love it. And this will allow me to have one in the truck while this one stays on the bench. Uh, I have a really nice auto meter one, and uh, I actually prefer the Joe's over. It's just easier to use that rubber hose. And then again, if it were to break or we lose it, 23 bucks is not a terrible price for that quality of the product. So. Uh, hopefully that was enough of a quicker rundown for you on that front. What we have next, I have no idea what I'm going to think of these, but I figured we would try them because uh, I've been using some other items to do this which technically aren't correct, but they work. Uh, this is from Pico. Part number would be 0660PT. This is an extractor tool and pick set. And it's going to set us back $7.99. So not a huge loss if these suck. 
Uh, they are, I believe, made in Taiwan, but I'm sure you've seen stuff like this, the old acetate handles and, you know, uh, stop, yield, and go. And uh, that's exactly what they are. They're OEM extractor tools. According to the packaging, uh, this releases and extracts GM, Ford, and Chrysler, which is, of course, the most important. OEM terminals from their housings use tools to compress the terminal tab, releasing the terminal without damage to the housing. We get a release tool, we get a .05 narrow extractor pick, and we get a .09 wide extractor tip. So, simple packaging. I can appreciate that. Again, you've probably seen some of these, you know, like you know, in, a, in a grandparent's toolbox or the old guy at work, whatever it might be. And uh, that's what these are. They're just extraction tools. So right there, uh, we've got the punch, right? Kind of the hollow shaft. And then we've got the narrow in the green and the wide in the red. Again, very subtle difference between those. That's four thousandths, right? Nothing crazy. Uh, but we will have them in tow now. They're super lightweight. If you lose them or break them, they are cheap to replace, obviously. Uh, but it's just you don't really see this from other manufacturers, you know? And I thought, well, you know, I'd, I'd kind of like a proper set. So we'll give them a go, see what we think of them. Uh, if those suck, we'll wind up with something else eventually. I've made it through life without any this far, so I'm sure if they disappoint me, we will somehow survive. Last item here. I shouldn't say last item. We have other items that are way cooler, but they're like expensive parts for the truck that we're putting in the Ram Revival series. Uh, if you like second-gen Dodge Rams, if you like mechanic and videos, anything like that, uh, where a guy's on the brink of cussing a project to the ground, uh, that would be the Ram Revival. And if you haven't haven't watched, I encourage you to do so. Should have a, quite a few of those released by the time you see this one. This part itself, though, or tool as I will call it, comes from Summit. It's part number. 220-001 and let me get the price point for you looks like it's gonna be $9.99 which some of you will think oh, that's a rip off others of you will say oh you know give me that part number again I, I gotta have that thing so I'm just gonna lower it down into the frame for you boom you're thinking oh well, got a bolt gauge huh that's that is kind of expensive but is it stainless well it is stainless and the problem is that it's not a bolt gauge it's something even better so we're going to get the ballastled NWS knife and we're just going to slice her, and, slice her and dice her open there. And what this thing is going to be is hopefully a godsend when I'm dealing with other people's stuff because people <laughs> never seem to know. Like you have buddies and they're like, yeah, I like working on my cars. <laughs> and then when they bring it something to you to help them with, they don't seem to really know what they're doing. I think because a lot of the time someone else did it and they just like don't want to admit it <laughs> type of a thing. And this is a complete nightmare to open. I'll just tell you that right now. But uh, it's a deal where you'll have somebody call up or you know text on the weekend and they're like, hey, you got any uh, Dash 8 hose? <laughs> like, yeah, you know, and typically people seem to like stainless braid over black, which you know, whatever to each their own. But, uh, I'll say, yeah, I've got some. You know, what do you need? And I'll say, like, oh, I need like uh, six inches. And it's like, what are you doing? And like, oh, I'm putting a new uh, pressure regulator on. It's like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll help you out. Swing by. Then they show up and they've got like nothing that they said that they had. It's like if they say they're dealing with you know dash eight, they're really dash six. Uh, just you know, it's like, hey, can you bend some lines for me? You know, I'm running half inch, and it's, you get there and it's five sixteenths factory size stuff. It's like, or where did you buy this? And they're like, oh, I got it at O'Reilly's. I'm like, well, yeah, that, that makes sense, man. <laughs> so this is a gauge, and it is for both uh, NPT and AN fittings and hose, right? And you're thinking, oh, that's not a huge deal. Well, I assure you, when you start doing other people's bidding and you deal with you know their knowledge to whatever extent that may be, you'll run into a lot of painful situations, all right? So right here, I've got this uh, pre-made hose in for me, and we've got this one sitting here. And if we think, oh, what is that? I can't remember. It was from so long ago. Does it fit in the Dash 6? No, it doesn't. Does it fit in the Dash 8? Yes, it does. So this is Dash 8 hose, right? Simple enough. Uh, if we come in here and we were to take the fitting itself, we can come in and we'll say, well, hey, that should be Dash 8, right? And we can put it in place. Uh, on the nut side, I guess. Which I'm not sure that you can see this. I'm just trying to get it to line up. 
oh, this is so awkward with the stupid hose on it, but you can kind of see what I'm doing there. Let me set that down and just grab a grab an end, right? So we'll stick with hose because I have it over there where I was reaching, and if you think, I don't know, that looks smaller than what you just had that was dash eight. Well, we'll come in here, and guess what? This is dash six hose. Obviously the frayed ends on the side will kind of be a limiting factor, but if you have it clean or taped down, depending on how you cut it, you can really go to town. I've got some dash 10 over there, but I'm not sure that we're going to mess with it. <laughs> so, what I will do is come in right here, okay? And I believe, just looking at this, I would say it's dash six stuff, but I could be wrong. But we'll take it, and we've got dash four, dash six, and as you can see, that fits beautifully. Again, with that being stainless, there's a lot of glare. That's why I'm trying to get black fittings as opposed to the nickel ones. But this is just going to be like super, super nice. I can't say enough about it. Um, all right, we'll set. Oh, that's a bad example. Really bad example. This is not, not what I thought it was. Uh, barb fitting. That'll, that'll suffice for now, right? Let me come in right here. This end here, okay, we're going NPT to AN, right? So, if we come in, and I assume this would work, you know, just doing it this manner for fittings and hose size for your standard stuff, that would be 3 8 which if you think, oh, okay, well, that would translate across to 6 16 which would be dash 6. Let's take the hose end of this, put it in place, and you can kind of see what we're, what we're working with there. It's a little blurry, but again, you get the idea. It doesn't fit. It fits really, really sloppily. <laughs> and it fits pretty good. So again, dash six. Coming in, if I were to thread that into this nickel one, just a barbed in, so we can, you know, kind of again adapt that out. We would take this, and you're thinking, well, okay, what size of a nut is that? If you come into the dash eight. It's got gaps on both sides, right? That's not what you want to see. So you go, oh, dash four doesn't fit there. Dash six fits like a glove. All right. Again, I realize that's not the best demonstration given the lighting issues. So I'll grab this one, which I happen to have, just sitting up there. And this again, to me, looks like it's dash six with a barb on one side. So we'll throw that in place. Beautiful. Again, when you're doing a project, like let's say that you're you're putting a, a drop-in tank pump, right? And you know that you're going to run dash 10 lines from the pump all the way up to your firewall. That's not a big deal. You know, you've got your, if you're coming out, you know, dash 10 and you run your hose and then you've got your dash 10 stuff at your regulator and then you reduce down, you're home free. That's a project you're tackling. No issues whatsoever. When a buddy comes in and they're like, yeah, I've got, you know, those like, uh, you know, five eighths lines on there. And uh, yeah, I, 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 just, I just need some help getting, you know, from the, from the regulator to the carburetor, man. And they show up and, you know, you're thinking that they've got like half inch fuel line. It's going to be some like horsepower monster. And then they've got, you know, like quarter and five sixteenth stuff, right? Uh, you're kind of up a creek. And with this in place, you got to realize with AN fittings, okay, if I bring these back out, this is branded for Summit, right? It's the compression fitting. But it doesn't sit here and it doesn't tell you what it's doing. It doesn't tell you it's going from you know, uh, three eighths to dash six. It doesn't tell you this is size, you know, dash six or dash eight or dash 10. There's no size designation on these. And when you run into someone else's crud, that's just super nice to have. Particularly if you're really nice and you help people out and they maybe swing by just to shoot the breeze with you and see if you'll take on something for them. You could send this home with them, okay? You'll know your friends, you'll know which ones you can send stuff home with and which ones you can't. But you can send this home with them and then when they get back to their project and they're telling you they've got, you know, dash 10 lines, you know, from the tank to the firewall and they realize that it's dash 8 and then they're going from the, you know, uh, output of the regulator to the carb and it's dash 6. That makes your life a whole lot easier, especially if you've got people that make you like buy the fittings and stuff and then pay you back. So... Uh, keep that in mind. That's where something like this that's 10 bucks really comes in handy. <laughs> and, uh, I'm looking forward to using it. I think it'll come in uh, pretty useful. And again, the big deal, like sometimes I deal with enough, you know, like dash six, dash eight, dash 10 that I can typically tell them apart, right? And it's just something you get accustomed to over time. Sort of like if you're like, well, you need a nine sixteenths for that. <laughs> like, how'd you know? 
It's like, well, I do this all the time, you know, as, as you can tell. Well, it happens over time type of a deal, right? This is a deal where I don't necessarily say deal in dash 12 and dash 16. So if I ever have somebody show up that's got something super cool, I can use this as my use this myself and benefit from it. Uh, also, it's really, really hard uh, when you've got like something on a frame rail with like multiple layers of paint and grime to know whether it's 3 16 or quarter or 5 16 or 3 8 for example. Uh, usually if you get it off the frame rail and kind of cleaned, you can tell, particularly, you know, 3 8 and 5 16 fuel line. I don't do as much brake stuff, right? That's not really my MO. Um, typically brakes work when people bring me stuff, right? <laughs> so it's kind of one of those deals. But uh, it's this something that simple and stupid. If you've got that pinned on your frame rail, I can take this and I'm thinking, yeah, it's going to be 3 16 you know, and I'll stick it there. And I'm like, oh, that's bigger, you know, and I stick the quarter on. I'm like, well, that's quarter. I'm glad I didn't go buy a bunch of fittings or something stupid. And so that's just kind of where this comes in handy. Nothing on the backside, but again, it covers the basics for your AN fittings and your NPT uh, sizes. So I thought it was useful. Again, $9.99. I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, again, Ram Revival is where the really cool expensive stuff is. This is just kind of like filler, if you will. So get my free freight, you know. And uh, I'll keep you posted if I recall. Maybe like the next time we do something from Summit or car cleaning products, I'll try to kind of let you know how this stuff is going. Uh, I guess we could at least open this one, especially since there's a zip seal. The rest of it, I mean, I, I'm not a seamstress. So I'm not a material expert. I can't tell you much about it. Uh, I'll just know if I like it or not when I use it, but this has a very high bristle count, which I'm pretty excited about. Color scheme's great. Uh, feels good in hand. There's no branding at all. You know, it's probably like some third-party deal and just, you know, outfitted out in different colors, but I'm excited to try it because, again, with all the dirt that comes, the tires just get caked. The windows, the paint, and the tires, you know, it's a black car. It's really bad, but... It just makes the tires look like ancient, you know, like it looks instead of more of like, you know, a performance street car, it's more of like a around the farm car type of an aesthetic. So your wheels look really good, you know, like especially from a distance, you can't see all the dirt on the body, but the tires, man, from a distance, those will look really bad. So uh, I'm hoping we can kind of, I should be getting new tires pretty soon. Uh, not like I want to, just like the tread is going to mandate that I do that. Uh, so hopefully though, while the time I have them, I can get the sidewall somewhat decent with that. Um, that feels about par for the cores. You could probably run into Walmart or Target and wind up with something. It might actually be cheaper to go this route though, particularly if you're pl placing an order. The waffle weave, I'm not going to open up because I don't want it to get dirty, but I am excited about this. And then the microfiber, I believe they are edgeless, but hey, uh, it should be standard fare across the board there. So. Uh, with that said, though, this is what we brought in this time around. <laughs> so, let me know if you have used the extraction tools. What are you using for extraction tools? I am curious. Like, is it just this random crud from a tool truck that you paid way mo a ton money, ton more money for, uh, or is it something cheap like this? Do you have like a fancy kit? Um, I don't do like a whole lot of repinning, you know. But uh, I don't know. Thought I thought it would be worth investing into to see if we like these or not, but. Um, also, any feedback on the Chemical Guys lines, or if you've got some products, or you know, uh, Walmart, whatever it is, Amazon that you go to that you absolutely love and thinks the bees needs, feel free to leave that. Also, the Joe's Tire Gauge, I cannot say enough good things about that. Not paid in the slightest by that company to say that or Summit Racing. That's just honestly, I've, you know how I do things with screwdrivers and whatnot. We gotta gotta investigate, figure out what we like, and this has honestly been the cream of the crop, and it stayed that way. Uh, occasionally I'll bring something new in or get something to throw in work or give somebody and you know I kind of test it beforehand <laughs> if you will but the Joe's one there's a reason that's always out on the bench and it's because it's the best in my opinion so uh, with that said I will quit rambling just something a little different for you from time to time I like to interject these give you you know something unexpected a uh, little little different from the norm uh, hopefully some of you enjoy it if not you know hey you saved 20 minutes of your time this weekend I suppose but uh, with that said, it is hot in here. I think I'm going to head in, work out, shower, uh, get to bed so I can come out here to a hot shop tomorrow and do all kinds of cool stuff because it's Saturday. <laughs> so, uh, summitracing.com, I'll have links to all this stuff down below. No, I don't make a dime from it. I simply put that there for your convenience in the event that you say, 
that's amazing and instead of you having to pause and listen for the part number you can just go click it and buy it add it to your cart get it and be happy that's the end goal here so uh first-hand experience with any of this stuff by all means let me know but uh, with that said if you have not already feel free to subscribe new videos every saturday typically in the midweek now too with the ram revival in full swing uh, if you subscribe and ring the bell and jump your charger across the creek, they just might notify you when a new video is live. Uh, if that's not the case, it should be every Saturday, so uh, sometimes midweek as well. Keep that in mind. <laughs> but, uh, with that said, you can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. With that said, I do hope you enjoyed. Hope you have yourself a great weekend, and I will catch you back here for more from the shop.